advice that you give this younger generation of scholars that are coming up? Mm. I actually wrote a four part series for Didacticos called Sage Advice, where I, um, where I do that and um, on a number of different levels. But I, I, I would first of all say that um, that you know this next generation is go is running into issues of actually finding a place in the academy. But that doesn't mean that they shouldn't become scholars. But that hopefully they'll be scholar pastors and uh, and others. So if you're thinking in the future of a typical kind of tenure track academic position, those are beginning to shrink quite radically for a whole bunch of different reasons. Uh, so be creative in terms of thinking about your professional life. Um, so, but I also say, uh, you know, another another issue is many of our institutions are very tightly defined, so that um, so that if you um, sort of have a different view, say on the creation evolution debate, you're going to be so, so. But I tell people my experience has been just be honest with the text. Be honest with the text. Um, you know, don't adopt positions that are going to f necessarily fit in with a particular institution, but just be faithful to the text. Partly because I've, I've, I've been very fortunate in my career in where I taught at what times of my life I've taught. Um, and, and it is important, by the way, for institutions to define themselves. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not one of these people who say we should have open theological borders at our institutions. My point is that we all, as biblical scholars, need to realize that our first and only loyalty is to God and to his word and to interpret it to the best of our ability, but also know what is clear and what is open to discussion. I think that's mm -hmm. an advice I'd give. You know, Protestants have rightly talked about the perspicuity of Scripture, the clarity of Scripture, uh, but the Westminster Confession of Faith starts its statement on perspicuity by saying, not all things are alike clear in and of themselves, but those matters pertaining to salvation are clear. And those matters that are essential to salvation are not a lot, but they are very clear. Mm -hmm. So on other issues, I think we need to be open to discussion. Do you think that the scholarship in the pastorate has become less or is it becoming stronger? You know, it's kind of hard for me to tell um, on kind of a global level, but I, I would have to say that in some ways, I think it probably has grown stronger. I, and I would use Tim Keller as an example. I mean, mm -hmm. Tim is such a model to many pastors and, and he is a scholar pastor, you know, preeminent in my opinion. Of course, we've been good friends since we taught at Westminster in our thirties, but I know I'm up close and personal. And so I think Tim's provided a good model of, of scholarship for the pastorate in a, in a kind of winsome way. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, there's a lot of craziness going on in the pulpit these days too. That's true. So, so it's hard to, hard to generalize, I think.